as a representative of the policing board and I represent my party on the policing board. I was a part-time police officer for 26 years and I served in the Royal Ulster Constabulary and in the police service of Northern Ireland. I'm very proud of that fact uh, and therefore as far as we're concerned there is a law and order and there is the government, there is the police service and there is our army. That's it. Anyone who wants to be outside that circle are uh, criminals and would be entitled to face the full uh, power and weight of the law should they break the law. Thank you. Stunned you. Thank you. Oh, very good. Thank you. Anything else you want to ask? I know you had several questions. <laughs> um, yesterday we actually learned about um, recently, I think it's like the 200 or something people, the, the on the yes. run, being mm. let go. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? I can talk quite a bit about that. <laughs> uh, we have information that over 200 people uh, who were on the run have applied for letters of comfort. I know that. Well, our opinion is that if you were on the run, what are you on the run from? Why would you go on the run if you were totally honest? We have quite a few thousand people lost their lives in the trouble. And a lot of that was down to terrorists, who in my opinion are cowards. It doesn't take much to park a car in the middle of a town and leave a bomb on it and blow that up. You saw that in Boston where they put the bomb into a litter bin. That's a tactic of the IRA. The IRA did that in a town called Warrington and they killed two children. In Boston, they killed a couple of children and the father had taken part in the marathon. Because I've spoken that that particular morning in our assembly. And I could just picture the father hugging his son after finishing the marathon, thinking, here I am, my son and I in a good, strong relationship. And a few months later, that child was dead. Nothing justifies an act of terrorism. So if you were a terrorist and you're on the run, what are you running from? You're running from the law. Now the British government clearly have done a dirty deal with the IRA. The current government is saying that they're no longer going to practice this. But then there are questions over the legality of these letters, letters of comfort. I hope if they go to a court of law, that the judge decides you've broken the law, you will pay a price. That's what I hope. I can't give you a more definitive answer than that. Would you say the same uh, to the loyalist groups, uh, uh, well, UDA? Yeah. yeah. No, no loyalist group, as far as we're aware, have been given matters of comfort. As far as we're concerned, anyone who broke the law and committed a terrorist offence is a terrorist, and we would quite happily see them behind bars. If you've broken the law and you haven't yet faced the consequences of your actions, you are equally liable in law. We do not differentiate. A terrorist is a terrorist is a terrorist. We We've heard that forces. from we a woman years ago. <laughs> yes, well, we, we support the forces of law and order, and we will continue to do so. Um, how do you feel about the people who are ex-prisoners who are let out because of the Good Friday Agreement that would otherwise still be in jail? The, the Good Friday Agreement brought us to a different place. And all those who had convictions were released on license. So therefore, we, as a party, had to take a very big step to bring peace to Northern Ireland, and we did that. And we paid for it in the elections. The people who didn't forgive us for that, but it had to be done. It was a step that had to be taken, and David Trumbull was very courageous in taking the step that he did take. And I don't think that is an actual step that's been recognised for what it actually was. We, as a party, have not been recognised for the risks that we took for peace. But we, we accepted that those people had to move forward. If any of them uh, involve themselves in terrorism, for example, in distant groups, they are released under license and can be returned to prison. And if they do break the law again, I think they will find it very difficult to try and use that as an excuse. So therefore, we would happily see them back in jail if they're breaking the law. We have, technically, uh, people who are members of this assembly who were terrorists. And it's a sad reality that Martin McGuinness, our current Deputy First Minister, will not reveal the full truth of his involvement in terrorist activity. That is sad, but there's nothing we can do to force it. Uh, in the United States, I would say uh, the public relations battle over the years during the time of the Troubles 
has probably been won by the Sinn Féin IRA. All of these students who just started in this particular course would have not known necessarily what it was or the context, but they have heard of the IRA, they've heard of Sinn Féin, but not the Ulster Unionist Party, the DUP, and, and others, for example. Do you think that the kind of fractionalized uh, position of the, or situation with the loyalist community is part of that? To be perfectly honest, I cannot understand the American position. The Americans uh, and the British have a very close affiliation. Fought together in two world wars and are currently fighting together in Afghanistan. And British soldiers are dying every day. And those British soldiers were part of our army during those campaigns. And yet we are British. And some people out there are supporting acts of terrorism. Whenever you have the act of terrorism that blew up the Twin Towers, nobody would have thought those people are freedom fighters, let's give them what they want. I don't know how many of you have researched the bombs here in Northern Ireland. I come from a town called Amon. And on the 15th of August 1998, my town was blown to hell and back by a bomb. And that bomb was planted by cowards. My colleague Tom Elliott here at the back is a Fermanagh man, and we won't hold that against him. But uh, in Ennis Gillen, on a Remembrance Sunday, a bomb went off. Remembrance Sunday here is similar to you. Know, you remember your soldiers who gave their lives in the First World War, the Second World War, of Vietnam, or wherever. Bombs were planted to kill people going to that event. And that was cowardice. Why would you want to kill people going to a remembrance event? The bomb that went off in Oman, they lied. They told them that the bomb was in the courthouse. Now, anybody that comes into Oman from the bottom of the town, you look straight up the street, from the very top of the street, there's a massive building with a royal coat of arms on it, which is the courthouse. You can see it for miles. The bomb was at the bottom of the street, about half a mile away from the courthouse. The police had to send the people down the town to get them away from the potential threat at the top, and the people were sent down towards the bomb. That was, that was your Republican terrorism. And I honestly do not understand the mentality of the American people. In Boston, where I was condemned and attacked, they regularly sent money through Noriad to Irish Republican. Why? My grandmother had relatives living in Boston. So there is a Presbyterian Protestant tradition in America. My family are Presbyterian. There's still a very strong Presbyterian connection in America. And there would be Irish Americans with Presbyterian backgrounds are sending money to the home country to Sinn Féin, stroke IRA, stroke Republicans. Why? The republicanism we are facing here is not the republicanism you have in America. It's not Republican-Democrat. These people want a 32-county socialist republic. Americans wouldn't accept a socialist republic. You weren't too happy with Cuba. You want Ireland to be another Cuba. Ireland is the front and back door to Europe for the Americans, should anything happen. Ireland is the front and back door. And if you had a country that was anti-American, you wouldn't get very far in your attempt to get back into Europe. You have to bear in mind, we want to remain British. And democracy gives us that right to remain British. But there are people in America who put their hands in their pockets and paid for terrorists. How can they sleep in their bed at night? Because if I was one of those people, I'd be ashamed of myself. As I say, I served in this force for 26 years. My parents were in the Ulster Defence Force, were in the Royal Navy during the war. My grandfather was in the Army during the First World War. I have nothing to be ashamed of. And I'm very proud to be associated with the Union flag, and to be a Unionist, and to be British, and to be here in Northern Ireland part of that. Before the next question, Dan, I have a question. But before the next question, I want to thank you. Uh, you're the most forthright uh, politician I think I've ever heard. You're actually answering the questions forcefully and with conviction. Years ago, I thought we were doing something wrong. When I was 18 years of age, I joined the police. 
And within six to seven months of my joining the police, one of my colleagues was killed. And his father insisted that we go into the OB here called the Wake House. So therefore we went in there for seven days, you have a wake. And nine times out of ten, the body is in the coffin, and the coffin is open. The Irish still do that. And the father insisted that I go in and see this young man in his coffin. Now I was 18. The young man in his coffin was 23. And there was a mark there, and there was a mark there. And between there and there, there was a bandage, because there was nothing there. I am now 55 years of age. And for those of you that are not too good at mental arithmetic, that was 37 years ago. And that still is in my head every day of my life. And I will never forget it. And I will never forgive the coward that walked up and shot him in the face. Um, I was just going to say that I think the problem with um, America is that, like, we're as a whole, they're not educated on what the troubles are and like what has occurred. So, like, prior to taking this class, I thought the Irish Republican Army just wanted, you know, one solid Ireland. And then once we started like educating ourselves on it, I realized it was like a, it was so much more complex. And that you said they want a solid socialist. I like island and as a whole America doesn't really like that is what they want they just hear the word that or like they hear that they want one island and they're like oh we're so all for it kind of thing and I think that's the problem is that, like by taking this class we're all getting educated and we can share with other people so that way like people see both sides and we can show them that there is more to it than just like the other right there's no doubt about that I mean Ireland is two states at the moment Northern Ireland and the Republic. We in the North wish to remain British. And I have to say, I, I talk to groups like this who are from the Roman Catholic tradition. And I talk, we used to have a local democracy week event and I used to enjoy them because you got a whole mixture of unionist, nationalist, republicans. And I had a group like this and there were girls there from the convent and convent girls generally are republican stroke nationalist. And I said, right, how many of you want United Ireland? And nobody put their hand up. And this young girl from the back of the room said, who in their right mind would want a United Ireland? We couldn't afford it. This state is maintained by money we get from Britain. Ireland is maintained by money from Britain. A lot of investment from Britain goes into Ireland. If Ireland was united tomorrow, the South could not afford the additional cost of holding on to the North. Because we get billions of pounds in subventions from the British to keep the state going. That includes all the benefits that we have here. Sickness benefit, our free health service, free education. All that is available here in the United Kingdom. Young people know that they could not afford to have a United Ireland. And I believe that we have a border <coughs> poll tomorrow over 80%, if not more, of the people would vote to keep the border. They might in their heart of hearts want to be a nationalist. They might in their heart of hearts want to be a 32 county republic. But if it's the dollar or the dole, what do you go for? And money speaks. So if you have the choice between the Queen's shilling or nothing, you take the Queen's shilling. Would you respond to this? Uh, some might say to you, if the Queen shilling dries up, you'll be part of the European, not shilling anymore, but uh, Euro, because uh, Europe is taking care of Ireland, the Republic of Ireland. Would it not then pick up the entire island? They paid very dearly. Their income tax rate, I think, uh, the high rate had gone to 50%. And your earnings level to hit 50% is not that big. They've also reduced pension. They are paying through the nose. And Britain still pays dearly into the Republic. Or Exchequer has given money into the Republic to keep it afloat. So it's not just Europe that's keeping them afloat. The United Kingdom government is also keeping them afloat. Uh, if, the, if the pound disappears, I'll be very, very surprised. We're very, very proud of our pound. And the pound has kept us going for many years and still will. So I think we were wise to keep out of the euro. Uh, the Americans should come back into the United Kingdom as well. Come on back and <laughs> to the Commonwealth. Because there are more royalists probably in America 
than there are in other parts of the world. If we send Her Majesty the Queen, or His Royal Highness Prince William to you, you all come out and ah! <laughs> <laughs> So there's not one Republican in America, you are all pro-British. So show that. Show that by supporting unionists here in Northern Ireland. And go back and tell your parents and your grandparents, do you know what actually makes sense? Leave Northern Ireland British. Let's support the British. Because of the say, if any more royal family go near you, and during the Diamond Jubilee celebrations, it was clear Her Majesty the Queen is highly thought of throughout the world. And if she or any members of her family turn up in New York or Washington or Vermont, <laughs> they will get a warm welcome. Can I interrupt, please? You, you, you tell me the time's up. Yes. I hope, I hope you enjoy. So I hope you enjoy your tour of the assembly. If you ever want to come back to me with emails or whatever, go on to the Northern Ireland Assembly website. My name is Hussey, not Dr. Hussey, H-U-S-S-E-Y. Fill it up and send me an email. Anything you want to know, I will answer. I'll happily answer. And if I can ever afford to get across to Vermont, you can then host me. You'll have a place to stay. Ah, happy day. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.